today on Running to Him. If we do not bring our children up recognizing the need to serve and love God, they will move to serve other gods. Today we will read Judges, chapters 1 through 5, and concentrate on chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Judges 2, 8 through 10 says, Then Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. And they buried him in the territory of Herod's inheritance, in timnath Heres, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. And all that generation also were gathered to their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, who did not know the Lord, nor yet the work which he had done for Israel. Well, many of us marvel at the Asbury Revival. Young people stopped what they were doing. And they spent time devoted to a significant amount of worshiping God. It was wonderful to see these young people actively participating in worship. But the question is, what exactly did this revival accomplish? Now, while it's still too early to tell definitively, and I want to hope that for the best, I don't think the revival had the impact others believed. And it may actually have hurt people coming to Christ. And let me explain why I believe this. The revival began with an emotional outpouring and it maintained that high level for a week or more. That energy, that emotional outpouring was undoubtedly a good thing. However, emotions tend to wear out after a while and other things take the fore. If training in righteousness doesn't start along with the emotional output, then when the emotion runs out, no one has anything to go on. And if leaders don't quickly begin to take those new believers or believers who are renewing their relationship with God under their fold, then just as quickly those people will start searching for something else. Now that's precisely what happened when the Israelites took over the land. I'm sure that Joshua and Caleb felt that they left behind an excellent leadership team that there after their deaths they they would survive, but they did not train the young people to search after God, and therefore they filled the void with other religions. And that's what could quickly happen to those who are caught up in the Asbury revival. Those young people realize the need to have a relationship with something greater than themselves. And the revival fit that need. However, without training and solid leadership, a gap will begin to occur and people will slowly drift off and start to think that there is nothing genuine about what has already happened. And later, if somebody approaches them and suggests that they must come to Christ, they will respond with something like, I've tried that and it really didn't work and it didn't fulfill me. They will be lost forever because the emotion was not coupled with training in righteousness. And this is my beef with people who say, just trust Jesus and you get to go to heaven. There is an element of truth in that statement. But if there is no growth or guidance, that person's life at best will be useless and at worst possibly be fooled into thinking that they have a secure future when they do not. Revival and repentance require change, changing our minds and turning to God. Without that change and without turning to God with training can be dangerous. So when we lead someone to Christ, we need to ensure, just as a child needs a parent to help them go through life, that we help that new baby in Christ and guide them and merge them into a deeper relationship with him. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at Phineas Jacobus at runningtohim.net.